Hello, it's Darren from Fleet MPS. Um, in today's video, we're going to look at Papercut MF and Hive. Um, this has been named the market leader by the IDC. And whilst it's suitable for any environment, we're specifically going to look at the benefits it has to offer for the legal sector. Um, we've got quite a lot to get through today, um, but I'm hoping it's going to be really informative uh, and helpful for you. So we're going to have a look at Papercut MF um, and how that would benefit a legal client. Um, so firstly, Papercut secures sensitive data to guarantee client confidence, uh, encrypts print jobs in transit to prevent hacks, requires staff to authenticate at a printer that could be using a door access card that you've perhaps already got or a pin code before releasing the printout and ensuring a complete audit trail with watermarks or digital signatures. So we can automatically put a watermark uh, onto the bottom of a page and that might say the username that printed it, the device it was printed on, and like a date and time stamp. So if a document was leaked, you can easily trace it back. Um, Find Me Printing solves the needs of IT and users equally with one secure print queue that users can send jobs to for secure release at any printer. Um, if you had multiple offices, um, users wouldn't need print queues for each site. They would just have one print queue and they can walk to any device in any office, log on with their card or their pin, and that's where their jobs will follow them to effectively. Mobility Print keeps your team efficient and empowered whilst on the move, um, printing na natively from any app on any device, be that a tablet, a laptop, smartphone or Chromebook. What's really nice with Mobility Print is if a user walks in and they've got their phone, they're not even on the corporate Wi-Fi. As long as they've got 4G or some sort of internet access from their phone, they can hit print and the document will go to their, their print queue effectively. Um, increase efficiency by assigning permissions for legal assistance to manage and organise prints on behalf of others. So this has come up sort of more since COVID times um, with perhaps barristers working from home. Uh, they want to send a print job from home and they want someone in the office to release that job on their behalf. Client billing options make bidding clients for print and copy jobs seamless and simple and can integrate into your practice management systems. So we can integrate with systems like Leap um, so that your uh, matter codes, if you like, are pulled straight from Leap into Papercut. And then when a user prints, they get a selection of those matter codes. They can search for them however they want to do it. Um, and then the printing and copying costs are attributed back to that customer um, and added to their invoice. Uh, Customise the print environment to work any way you want with advanced scripting. Um, so one that comes up quite often is converting emails to black and white. So we can write, um, in fact, down here we, we see a little bit of code that we can write so that when an email is sent, if the user selected colour or forgot to convert it back to black and white, it will just automatically do that for them. Or we could have it pop up a message on the user's screen saying, you printed this in black and white, uh, in colour, are you sure you don't want it in black and white? And it will give them a yes, no choice of whether they want to convert it or not. But to have a quick walk through Papercut, um, I mean you, you don't necessarily need to do anything with it once it's running, it kind of just runs in the background but you can log into it and get some information. So we've got information here uh, about pages that have been printed, um, system uptime, devices etc etc. Papercut's also very environmentally driven um, so it tells us the equivalent trees that we would have used uh, in terms of paper, amount of CO2 produced etc etc. Um, and that ties in quite nicely I think with our print relief program. Um, so you know obviously the, the amount of trees uh, we kind of see in here we'd expect to be seeing that we're offsetting in print relief. So on the users tab um, Papercut automatically pulls in all the users from your directory um, so when a new user joins it's pulled straight into Papercut that user is then provisioned for printing um, so no one needs to do anything um, they're, they're just ready to hit print. So if we look now at accounts, um, this in a, a legal scenario would be our client billing. Um, so we could load in matter codes and we can have sub codes for each matter. Um, and this enables us to bill back to the clients when the users are either printing or copying. Um, so if I send a, a test page, you'll see how that works. So print test page. So user or end user gets this kind of pop up. Uh, they can either select matter codes from a list or they could search for a matter code. Um, this could be the, the client name as well. It doesn't have to be a code. You could have a physical name in there. And then we select what we want to bill back against. So uh, matter code 4502, case number one. I'm going to tick that one, print that job, 
Okay, now if I go into sorry, if I go to wasn't it? If I go into that one and look at the job log, we can see our job in there. Um, I've not loaded any cost in in my test system here, but obviously if we did, it would it would tally up the cost. And then we either integrate with your existing practice management software to um, pass that information back, so it just adds it to the customer's invoice, or you can just run an invoice report from here. So we could say invoice report, um, what dates we want to run from, etc. Uh, what file format we want, um, just for the purpose of this, let's do HTML, run the report, and there we go. So, obviously, um, you know, we would expect to see a bit more information on a, an actual report, but, but for the purpose of testing, that gives you an idea. We can customize any of the reports in PaperCut as well, so you can have your corporate logo up here, um, yeah, however you want it to look. We'd have a list of printers. Um, these aren't necessarily the printers that you, the users will see. These are just kind of the printers that are on site that documents are going to be routed to when they, they do the follow me print workflow. Um, if we go on to one of them, you'll see some of the things that we can do with them. So we spoke earlier about watermarking. Um, so I could apply a watermark to the bottom of the page um, and it's uh, going to say printed by it. It'll give the user's name, uh, the date and then a signature. And we can customize that how you want. If we look at scripting, this is something we spoke about earlier. Um, this is where I could do things like converting the emails to black and white. And if I look through, there should be what they called a recipe in here for me. Uh, convert all email printed to grayscale. Now, don't worry, this is something that Fleet MPS Professional Services would do. Um, we're all trained to code, so we, we know what we're doing with this. Um, but yeah, this is basically saying that if a, a document comes in that's titled Outlook, Office Outlook, or Outbind, which we know to be the titles of emails, um, it's going to then convert that job to grayscale. Uh, and if the user has a client running, so this is a bit of software we install to be able to uh, give feedback to the user, it will then send them a message saying your email has been automatically converted to grayscale. Um, we could change that. We could make that pop up a message that says, um, you've printed this in color. Would you like to convert it to black and white? And it gives them that choice of yes or no. Uh, so just to give an idea, this is what the kind of pop-up notifications would look like. So we can have buttons down the bottom here and some text in that window. Uh, and it tells us what document and what printer it related to. So just to have a look at the user experience. So this is our device. Um, so the users hit print to that single print queue on their computer. They've walked to any device in the building or, or indeed the business. Um, they tap their ID card and that will log them in. Um, just on that, so this screen, this is based on a Xerox device. We can customize these how you want. So during kind of COVID, I was doing a lot of these wash hands type screensavers, but we could put any imagery you want on there, your corporate logos, any messaging you want on that screen. Um, you could do pin code log on as well as a card. Um, so we've got a little keyboard icon up here. We can put a nice red arrow point in that with some instructions telling the user how to use it. Um, so yeah, user logs in. If they've got print jobs waiting, they'll see a screen a bit like this. Um, this is actually the screen of Papercut Hive, the cloud version, but very similar with, with Papercut MF. Um, in MF, we don't get the thumbnails, but we get a list of print jobs with all the same information. And it also gives us the costs of each print job as well. Um, so we could either, we, we get to the device and we might think, actually, do you know what? This print job over here, I don't need that anymore. I, I accidentally printed it twice or it's something I don't need. Tap on it. And then we've got a little delete icon at the bottom. Um, otherwise, we just hit select all, print selected, and they're all come straight out of the device. Um, other thing to note is when we go to the email screen, um, rather than having to kind of create address books and search through address books, because you're logged into the device, the device now knows who you are and it will auto fill your email address. Um, so it's just email, press send, job done. Some really nice things on the Xeroxes as well. Um, so say I'm doing lots of double sided scanning. I load all my originals in the top, big bundle of originals and say they're not all double sided. We've got a few single sided ones in there. What we can do is turn on remove blank pages and then that'll scan the whole batch uh, and any you know, single sided blanks effectively that it sees, it will take out of the, the final PDF file. Um, we've also got stuff like OCR on here, so we could um, set a document to searchable. So when you scan a document, your computer doesn't know that it's text on that document. It just sees it as an image, if you like. So with searchable turned on, it will recognize the text on that page so that you can then select it, copy it, paste it, uh, kind of making it editable. 
We can also password protect files from here so that um, whoever receives that file has to open it, has to type that password to open it. And we've got some options around multi page or, or single file per page scanning. Um, potentially, if you're scanning big batches of invoices, you might want to use one file per page so that it separates each page out into separate files. Whilst we're on here, it's probably worth noting the other apps that we can put on Xerox devices. So Xerox ID Checker, for example, is a really great way of scanning in, um, say, a passport. Uh, and then it does a verification on that passport for you um, to check that it's oh, well, not, not a forged passport. We've also got our own internal apps. So Request Service is probably our most common one, which is just a way of the user's login service requests from the device. And it literally creates a ticket in our systems that we can respond to them. Uh, there's many different apps available. Xerox effectively have their own app store, just like you do on, say, an iPhone or an Android device. Um, and we can create custom apps for you as well. So any kind of business work workflow that, that needs to be done, we can tend to make something that will work with that. So if we take a quick look at Mobility Print now, um, this allows us to share our secure print queue or even any direct print queue if we like out to um, any any user on any device. So they could be on a you know a laptop, they could be on a, a mobile phone, a tablet, etc. User gets sent a link that adds the Mobility Print printer to their device. They just hit print and then they can walk up to the device, log in, and um, release their print jobs. There's also a cloud print option. Um, with this, the user doesn't even need to be on your corporate Wi-Fi. As long as they've got some sort of internet access, albeit 4G, or perhaps they're printing from home, um, their print job will get into your system. So here I've set it up on a Windows laptop. Um, user could be in a cafe or at home. They hit print. The job goes straight to the business network. With PaperCut, not only have we got the, the default onboard device scanning, but we can also create a series of scan actions. Um, now, these are great because rather than configuring each device with scanning, which is kind of, you know, it's a task for us, but, but in a, a large organisation, it's a task that perhaps your IT would want to take on. They can do it centrally from the scan actions tab. So we could create a new scan action. We could scan back to cloud storage, um, be that Google Drive or perhaps SharePoint more likely. Uh, we could scan back to a folder or an email address and we can preset all sorts of different things in here. Um, and we can give these to different users. So it might be that one user logs in and they get shown a certain list of scan actions. Another user or, or someone from another group logs in and they get shown different scan actions. Um, so it's really quite customizable. Uh, and these could be even scanning back to, I don't know, perhaps you're using a document management system. Um, certain users have access. So perhaps you'd give them a, a watch folder in that system that they can scan back to. Worth noting as well on the devices, we spoke about scripting earlier. Um, we can also do scripting at device level. So if we have a look through some of the kind of default ones that are in here, um, deny login to, to devices over the weekends, uh, impose a daily copy limit, um, send an email alert when users access the copier at weird times of day. Um, so that might be out of hours and you're sort of worried about people printing things they shouldn't be printing, that, that kind of thing. Our reporting tab. Um, so we get lots of reports in here. Probably the most common one would be a user printing summary. So if I quickly run that now, um, and it's going to give us a list of all the usernames, how many color pages they've printed, how many grayscale, double sided, uh, and then the cost to the business of that. We can schedule reports as well. So we could say that, you know, once a quarter or once a month, that report gets sent out automatically to someone in the business rather than them having to log on and, and run it manually. Um, we can also do things like seeing the largest print users. So who is spending the most on printing, that sort of. Uh, and we could do that by uh, groups as well. So um, perhaps we've loaded in various departments in the business and we want to see what each, what each department's costing us. We can do that in here. For some more advanced reporting, we can add in a piece of software called Intuitive. Um, and this gives us more what I'd call insight. So we can uh, visually see what's going on uh, in the print environment in our business, and we can drill down into each thing. So as we click on a chart, it takes us further down and further down into to each level of information. So here we can see cost savings. Um, this is print jobs that the users deleted at the device rather than a job coming out and ended up in paper waste. 
Uh, we've got user analysis as well, so we can drill down into each individual user, see what they're printing, and potentially see if they're printing things they shouldn't be. So we've looked at Papercut MF, which is Papercut's flagship product, um, but does have to be hosted on a server, either on site or in your own private cloud. Um, so let's have a look at Papercut Hive. This is their cloud SaaS solution. So you don't need any of your own infrastructure for this. Um, it's just a service you sign up to via us. Um, so a complete cloud native print management system for business, simple and quick onboarding for users and guests with integration into Azure AD. And that really is simple. So just like in Papercut um, MF, the users were pulled in automatically. With Papercut Hive, exactly the same thing happens. Um, you can even have it install the print queues for them automatically, or you can just have it send an email out, which, which has got a link in it that the user clicks. Um, that email also contains the mobile apps as well, so they can uh, you know, open that email on the phone, set their mobiles up for printing as well. Uh, Find Me Printing from any device enables users to print to any printer in seconds from a single secure print queue, exactly the same as Papercut MF. Um, convenient secure print release options using ID card or PIN, keeps printing activity secure and under budget. Yeah, exactly the same as MF. We can still use our door access cards or we can assign a PIN number automatically to users. Um, and promote responsible document handling with the responsible reminders to give users a friendly nudge to print double-sided or grayscale and complete audit trails with watermarks or digital signatures. So again, exactly like paper cut. Um, MF. The only difference is that we don't have the scripting bit there. So um, we can prompt users to say convert to black and white or, or do double sided, but we can't do it based on, I don't know, they're printed an email or whatever. It, it would be based on everything. So here we are. This is Papercut Hive. Again, just like Papercut MF, you don't necessarily need to log into this. Um, this kind of all just runs in the background, but you can go into it, see the dashboards, make any changes you might want to make. Um, so, yeah, we can see kind of our print usage, um, top print users, gives us a bit of information about the devices as well. So tone levels, all that kind of stuff. To be honest, you know, we auto replenish toners anyway. So when a toner reaches 30 percent, we automatically send one out. But I guess it's quite nice to still be able to kind of see that and uh, see what devices need those toners fitted. Um, and yeah, some other information around at the bottom here as well. So if we look at the print security tab, um, we've still got our watermarks over here, as, a, as we saw in Papercut MF, um, and digital signatures as well. Um, so a digital signature will just be a, a hashed number. So it's a number that, uh, or, or uh, some hex that you know human wouldn't understand as such, but it'll be printed at the bottom of the page. And if you was to take that from that document, put that into Papercut, we'd be able to find what that original document was and a load of information about it. So if we look on the reduce waste tab, we've got some bits here where we can promote things. So if I say promote two sided, what I can do here is I can say, right, 50% um, of the time, promote the user to do double sided. So what that means is that the user walks up to the device. They've sent some jobs that are just single sided. They might go up one day, release those jobs, and it's not going to say anything about it. They might go up at the next time go to release some more jobs and it will prompt them and say, oh, actually, do you want to convert this to double sided? So we're not pestering the users too much. We're kind of just giving them gentle hints. Um, and likewise, same with black and white we can do exactly the same thing. Um, and we could say, right, actually, we don't. So we're not too worried if users are printing color. But if it's over 25 pages, that potentially is an issue. Let's prompt them at that point. In fact, let's always prompt them when it's over 25 pages. So on the story tree tab. Um, actually, a little bit like when we were looking at Intuitive, uh, where we had some more advanced dashboards. It's, I kind of relate this slightly to that. So rather than just the normal report, we're getting some what I call insights here. So um, where's a good one? Paper sizes. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's A4. So A4 is our most common paper size. A uh, person who copied the most is John Smith. Uh, amount of pages saved by uh, either you know being deleted at point of print, um, etc. Uh, most popular scan destination, so who's scanning the most, um, all that kind of quite helpful um, information. Uh, busiest printer, yeah. 
job locks we can go in at any point and see who's printed what effectively uh, and we could narrow these down so we could say all right let's search for James and we'll, we'll just narrow down to the jobs that he's been doing um, we can still do reports we've got an add-in for that where we can do the kind of same sort of reports that you saw earlier in PIPKMF uh, so here we can see an example of the type of report that we could export from uh, Papercut Hive. Uh, this can be done automatically on a schedule, perhaps, you know, once a, a month or once a quarter. Um, an activity log is simply just who's logged in, who's logged out, who's made changes to things, that, that kind of thing. So just finally then on the technical side of things, um, so a lot of people worry with a cloud-based print solution that when they print, their print jobs are going to go up to the cloud uh, and then effectively come straight back into the office to, to print. That doesn't happen with Papercut Hive. Um, the reason that doesn't happen is because a piece of software is installed on each user's device. That piece of software not only installs the printer for them, but it, it maintains something that Papercut call an edge mesh. So um, when you print, your print job remains on that piece of software on your computer. It will also replicate around to other computers on the network. Um, we can have super nodes as well. So these could be, uh, perhaps you still have an on-site server. We, we could replicate the job onto those and always kind of uh, prioritize those because we know they're always going to be online. We can also send a copy of the job to the cloud. Um, so what then happens is you walk to the device, you select your jobs to release, press print, and then effectively Papercut Hive says to your computer, OK, now send those jobs to the printer, you know, that the user's standing at. Um, if your computer has been turned off, it will just ask another computer, oh, that job that you got sent earlier, send that onto the printer that, that you know, this user's standing at. And if all users were turned off or perhaps you'd got you'd sent a print job from one site and then walked to another site, it would go, OK, I can't find any nodes on the network that have this print job, but there is a copy in the cloud and I'm going to fetch that from there. Um, so that's the only time that the job would physically go to the cloud and then back again. Right. 20 minutes in. If you're still watching, that's great. I, I hope that means that this has been helpful. Um, yeah, if it's of interest, please come and talk to us or have a look on our website. Um, we work with uh, law firms and chambers, especially around Temple and Lincoln's in Fields. Um, and there's lots of other things that we can do as well, other than just the print aspect. So we can help with uh, things like um, digital signing. Um, so yeah, one of the issues we believe in in legal is that you know you've got the cost of printing out uh, documents to be signed um, you've got then obviously the postage costs and then the turnaround time so it could take up to a week you know to get that document to the customer and then them to, re to return it um, with digital sign-in that's you know could be turned around in the same day and drastically reduce your costs as well so yeah have a look through what we've got on there some really helpful stuff and um, we've also got quite a lot around our environmental projects as well um, so reducing your co2 usage um, and print relief is massive where we uh, plant trees in line with your your paper usage um, yeah thank you very much